guys, today's video is going to be about your Christmas revision plan, how you might approach your revision so you can start laying the foundations so that when the exams come around after Easter you feel far more confident and that you haven't left everything to the last minute. The first thing I want to say is that everyone is completely different. For some people out there, they won't need to do any revision over Christmas. Um, and that's perfectly fine. For other people, they might want to lay a few foundations, look up a few notes. And for other people, they may want to do some proper hardcore revision because maybe they're going skiing at February half term or they're doing something else, which means they might not be able to do quite as much work as they wanted to there. So they're laying the foundations good and proper right now. But it doesn't matter. There's no wrong or right way. Just make sure you are sorted with yourself. Don't let other people, other friends affect you too much. Now, like I said, if you are planning on doing a bit of revision, maybe all you'll actually want to do is go through your topic areas and make sure that you're confident that you've actually understood the content that when it was covered in class. And that might need you to go back through your notes, read your textbooks, maybe look at a few of my videos on the specific topics. Just make sure that if you're thinking about the heart, that you're happy that you understand what an arterial vein is. You might not know exactly where they try take blood to and from, but just make sure you're comfortable with what an elastic fibre is, or what the valves do in the veins and that you understand that that's to do with the pressure of the blood flowing through. So you're just getting familiar with the topic areas, but not that you know them off by heart. Now, for people who are properly hardcore revisers, that was me when I was your age. I was super keen and I did a lot of revision, mainly because I was, my memory isn't the best, so I was always a bit worried about leaving it to Easter. So I did actually get a lot of work done at Christmas. So for the next part of the video, it's going to be for you guys. I'm going to talk about how you can structure your revision timetable to make sure you maximise it and you get the most out of it as possible. So let's talk about the Christmas holidays first of all. It's crucial that you take a lot of time off. You can't work the whole way through Christmas and expect to go back to school feeling good. You need a proper rest. This term since the summer is the longest school term. It's pretty hard. The weather's horrible. It's very dark outside. It's easy to get miserable. So you need to make sure you take time off. And personally, I recommend taking off those days in the lead up to Christmas, because they're the most fun days. They're really Christmassy, so I'm talking the 23rd, 24th, 22nd potentially. Obviously Christmas Day and Boxing Day. Take all these days off, feel completely guilt-free, because you've deserved it, because you've worked hard over the term and you're doing some revision before and after Christmas, so you totally deserve to take those days off. And obviously take off the days surrounding the new year. Now it's up to you, but maybe you will feel like doing a bit of revision in the time between Christmas and the New Year. I've always found it a bit of a black hole. There's not that much going on, you're a bit flat after Christmas, so why not use those days to get a bit of work done? Similarly, if you get a few days done around the 19th, 20th, you'll feel really good in the lead up to Christmas, knowing that you've done some work and that you really deserve your time off over the Christmas holidays, and then you can do some more work in the New Year before you go back to school to get yourself nice and ready for the new term. So what I'm saying really is take about five or six days off completely and then just do, it's up to you, but do approximately four to five hours on the other days and you'll go back in January feeling great. If this is sounding really scary, four to five hours is sounding way too much, that's absolutely fine. I'm just talking for the people that are less confident, like myself when I was your age, people whose memories aren't as good, people that just want to make sure they're in a comfortable position. All these people, this, these tips are for you. For everyone else, don't stress. Just do your own thing and you'll be fine. So let's carry on people who are doing a bit more revision and look at how you're going to split up your time. Now first of all you need to list all your subjects and you effectively need to put stars by them to work out how much actual revision you're going to have to do for each subject because clearly things like the sciences, there's a huge amount to learn in all three sciences, physics, biology and chemistry, so you're going to have to spend a huge amount of time actually going over that content. Things like English and languages, slightly different revision techniques, you won't need to spend the same number of hours that you'll need on the sciences. So make sure you alter your revision timetable accordingly. Equally, subjects like geography, history, potentially, they'll need quite a lot of time spending on them. So make sure you split up your revision timetable, taking that into account. Um, a tip with maths, I don't know about you guys, but I always used to enjoy doing maths in front of the TV, but I was quite good at maths, so that was okay. Obviously, if you're struggling to concentrate because you're in front of the TV, don't do that, don't say that I said that. But if you're finding it quite straightforward and you just need to go over the... Uh, methods involved and it's kind of like something that you can do quite easily. I definitely recommend doing that in front of the TV because it breaks up your revision. Another thing you need to take into account when you're planning how to break up your time between the subjects is how good you are at the subject because it's very tempting to spend more time on those subjects that you really like or you're really good at 
and less time on the ones that you hate or you're finding really difficult because obviously it's those difficult subjects that you need to spend more time on and put more effort into so make sure you're aware of that so both how much content there is to learn and how much you know the subject or like the subject and make sure that that is reflected in your revision timetable when it comes to actually sorting out your revision timetable, I've already said I don't recommend doing more than four or five hours a day, don't do any more than that. And what you want to do is work solidly for about 45 minutes at most and then take 15 minutes off after every 45 minutes because honestly if you try and work longer than 45 minutes you're going to struggle to concentrate and your time won't be affected. Make sure when you're actually working for those 45 minutes that you remove your mobile phone, you're not on Snapchat, you're not on the internet procrastinating because there's literally no point. What you want to do is work hard for 45 minutes and then spend the next 15 minutes catching up with your friends, doing everything you want to do and then you won't have that horrendous feeling of guilt that often happens if you're sat there for an hour revising and you know you haven't actually done anything because you've been too busy chatting to other people. So yeah, actually it won't be that long if then, if you decide to do four lots of 45 minutes over the day, it'd be very easy to do. If you decide to do the morning period, you'll be done by like one o'clock. If you do a bit in the afternoon, a bit in the morning, you'll have a nice time off to take off during lunchtime or in the evenings. So really four hours hopefully won't seem too much. So I'm just going to show you an example of a revision timetable you might want to draw yourself up. So down here I've listed all my subjects. Um, and obviously you'll be doing different subjects, so obviously write those down here, but I've put a little um, cross as a scale to show how much revision I personally think I would need to do, and I've weighted it to see, so that you can see that science requires more revision, maths requires quite a lot, whereas the English, French, and potentially history, I mean people taking history might disagree, but I've said do slightly less revision compared with the sciences. So that's told me what I need to do in terms of how I'm gonna weight all my time. And then if we scroll up, we can see my revision timetable. I've decided that I would like to start work at 9 o'clock. So I'm going to work from 9 to 9.45 and give myself a 15-minute break to mess around on my phone or whatever. Then I'll work from 10 to 10.45, 11 to 11.45 lunch. And obviously you've got those 15-minute breaks in there. A nice amount of time for lunch and then just two hours in the afternoon and you're done by quarter to three and you have the whole of the rest of the day off. So actually, please don't think your vision is going to take over your entire lives. If you stick to this timetable, make sure that you're actually working for the full 45 minutes. Um, you're going to make sure you do plenty of work. And so what I've done is I've copied that across. So I've done it up until the 22nd of December, waiting my subjects. So we've got a lot of science featuring in here. Then you're having four days off for the Christmas holidays. And then we're back on it again on the 27th um, for another four days. So I hope I've given you plenty to think about and I hope you've really found it useful. I really don't want this to stress you out. It's just for those people out there that require a bit more structure to their time, that are keen to do a bit of revision over the Christmas holidays. I really hope you found it useful. Please give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and I'll see you very soon. Bye!